When I get older, losing my hair Many years from now Will you still be sending me a valentine? Birthday greetings, bottle of wine If I've been out till quarter to three Would you lock the door? Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Hello everybody! My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. It's good to see you. I see Michael. I see Albert. I see Dean and Alex. Welcome. It's good to see you guys here. Fantastic. Let me know if it, you can hear me, if everything sounds good. It looks good on my end. Um, so just let me know if, what it sounds like. All right. Today we're going to talk about a couple of Beatles songs. I was going through... I was trying to think of, you know, what should we actually do today? And uh, I was thinking, you know, I, I, I'm going to look at some Beatles songs because there's a, uh, when I'm 64 is, is an interesting song to me because I'm going to be 64 this year. It's amazing, isn't it? So it's uh, special to me. All right. Thank you, Alex. Let me know that everything is fine. Um, and yesterday and i did a video one time and it said yesterday was uh i think it was back in 2012 or something like that uh i think the title was yesterday was um paul mccartney's birthday and i just played a little piece of yesterday and i realized that i have not taught yesterday on my channel i think in the early days when people used to call me out and say hey that's my song and that kind of thing um I used to think that I was going to get a copyright strike. And so I wasn't doing covers and that kind of thing. So uh, now, uh, of course, I just do covers all the time. And they share, you know, they share uh, uh, money with me. What do they call it? You know, the advertising money and that kind of thing. That's why I really appreciate my supporters over at Patreon and over at Subscribestar and also the people that uh, support me through PayPal. It's very much appreciated. So we're going to talk a little bit about these two songs. Let me put um, on the screen. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, the Quail Studios Music and Lead Sheets book. I just wanted to say really quick that I do have that. And these songs are going to be in that book. They're not there yet, but I'm going to put them in. And uh, there's a, I'm going to release that uh, version very quickly uh, with these two songs in it. And uh, let's go on. There's When I'm 64. I can't see. It's a little bit small from this angle. Oh, yes. This is the key of G. I actually have two lead sheets. I have uh, the one in the key of C and one in the key of G. And if I remember correctly, When I'm 64 is actually in D flat. And I was reading that When I'm 64 uh, was sped up a little bit from the original recording to make Paul's voice sound a little younger. And did you know that he actually wrote this when he was about 14 years old? <laughs> it was like one of the first songs that he ever wrote, like the second song or something. Uh, I'm not exactly sure about that, so I can be corrected. Let me know in the, in the comments what you know about this. But I, so C is very close to the original key. Dun, 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 right? But I put it in the key of G because it's more comfortable for my voice. And probably for many of you out there that want to play it, key of G is very good. Also, the instrumentation is two clarinets, a bass clarinet, bass and percussion or drums or and that kind of thing. And it's so interesting to me that the Beatles did these uh, varied songs. Uh, I mean... If you think about uh, bands today, usually it's like one style, but the Beatles were all over the place, especially when they started. They were more teeny bopper and that kind of thing, and then they progressed as they went along. But even uh, now, this song is off of Sgt. Pepper, which is a really amazing album. And uh, back in the old days, we used to have a four track, 
uh, and this was done on a four track. That means there's four different tracks. Now, in the regular DAW that you get in your computer now, you can have like, I don't think there's a limit, but 256 tracks is something you can do, right? But back in the old days, you only had four tracks to deal with, and then as technology got better, you had eight tracks, and you had 16 tracks, and then you had 24 tracks. And uh, I actually have a four-track machine. I didn't bring it in, but I could show it to you. It's only a quarter-inch four-track. But, um, okay, so let's talk about this song a little bit. Um, I'm not going to worry about the intro. We're just going to go right into it. Uh, it starts on a G chord. I'm just going to do it in G, okay? When I get older, losing my hair many years from now. Now that's very uh, signature right there. I love that little line. So it goes from a G chord to a D chord. And then it goes, will you still be sending me a valentine? Somewhere in there it goes to a D7, right, to a seventh chord. Birthday greetings, bottle of wine. All right, so we've got, we're in the key of G. We went to the one chord. And let's bring up, uh, on the screen, I'm going to bring up a scale for you. There we go. Oh, maybe I should move over a little bit. I'll just move that over. Let's see, which way do I go? <laughs> All right, so you see right there, actually I've got highlighted the G and the D. Uh, let's take the highlight off. So I've highlighted the G and the D because we're in the key of G. So we started out with the one chord. When I get older, losing my hair many years from now. Now a D7 chord with that seven in there, it really feels like it's strongly going to go back to G, back to the one chord. Will you still be sending me a valentine? Birthday greetings, bottle of wine. If I get out to get it a little closer so I can see it. If I'd been out till quarter the three, would you lock the door? This is really interesting because it goes from a, a G chord to a G7 chord. And then it goes to a C chord. Okay. Now a C chord, if you look at the key of G, You'll notice that the C chord is the four chord, okay? But why does the G chord go to a G7 and then to a C? Well, it's because it's a secondary dominant, right? Or a lower, lower level dominant. Let me show you right here. See on that uh, chart right there, right below the C is a G. Now, that's a fifth Here's a C. Let's see. So it's a fifth above, or it's a fourth below. So it's actually the five chord of C. If you look up at the, the C major scale, you'll notice that the five is G and the one is C. <coughs> so we go to that G7. Would you lock the door? Okay, so we've got this really great thing going on. We've got the, f the one chord to the five chord, and then we've got a five of four, G7, going to a C. Now, on this chart right here, you will notice... I'm just going to take my mic so I can talk to you while I do this. You will notice, in fact, I'm going to make this bigger so that we can talk a little bit more. There we go. See that? You will notice that here's a G and there's a D. That's a one chord and that's a five chord. All of the uh, notes that are below, like the D, the A chord, here, let's erase that color right there, but the A chord right here 
is the 5 of d. In fact, a goes to d. Right there, you see that? A goes to d. It also goes this way. This is one thing I love about this chart, is that you can figure out where your 5 to 1 relationships are. A goes to d. And there's the d there. And then also, you know, we just did the G chord right there going to a C. That was a secondary dominant going to the four chord right there. All right, let's erase this. And let's go on and look at the next section. I'm going to erase everything. And we're going to go back and look at this chart right there one more time. Let's see, that wasn't it. How do I get that bigger? There we go. So you can see it. All right, I'm going to go on and do the rest of it right here. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? All right, let's talk about that line right there because it's really, really important. Okay, and what happens is that we play a C chord, which is a four chord. I'm going to mark this on the chart here in just a minute. Will you still need me? Will you still? So we go from a C to a C minor to a G. Okay, and that's actually very, very common in uh, jazz and that kind of thing, right? So we got a four chord going to a minor four, going to a G. In fact, it sounds like. Sounds like a really nice ending right there. But he does, will you still need me? Will you still feed me? Goes to an E chord, to an A chord, when I'm to a D chord, 60 to a G. Four. Let's look on the chart and see what he does, okay? Here we go. See if I can do this while I while I'm kneeling right here. Okay, let's turn this one off and bring the major scale over again. And I'm going to highlight what we've got here. We've got a C chord and then C minor going to a G, which is a 4 to 1 relationship right there. And then it goes to an E chord right there. Where does that go? Look, the E over here is minor, the 6 chord in that in that line. But all of a sudden we're doing an E major, and then we do an A major chord, and then we do a D major chord, and then we play a G major chord. So what we've got here, he jumps from the G chord to the E, which is a five, and y you can look over here too. See the E? The E is a five, that's a minor, of A. So it's a five of A, the A is a 5 of D, and the D is a 5 of G. This is amazing. Uh, you know, I forget what that's called. There's a jazz uh, uh, progression. I mean, that's like a fifth progression or something. I can't remember exactly. Oh, let's see. i got to bring that over here so I can make this smaller again. There we go. So Paul McCartney is actually, when he was 14 years old and writing this, he, he was doing it all by ear. I'm sure of it. I'm sure he didn't know anything about uh, music theory. When I was 18 and I was in college, I had uh, my uh, teacher give me a, an assignment, and we were supposed to be doing something in the key of C with C, F, and G. And so I wrote this little piece, and I found out that the D chord sounded really good before the G chord. So I was, you know, went to D to G, and that was my progression. Well, the D is a 5 of G. And when I turned in my paper, he's like, oh, you know, you didn't do it right. And I'm like, what do you mean I didn't do it right? It sounds great. He goes, no, no, we're not doing this, set, you know, this concept yet. I'm like, what concept? He's like, well, this is a 5 of 5. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know what it was. I was just doing it by ear. That's exactly what Paul did. Will you, let's see. Will you still, let's see, here we go. You still need me, will you still feed me when I'm 64? Same thing. Let's look at the other song that we talked about. 
that I said that I was going to talk about, which is uh, yesterday. We'll do that really quick. All right, here is yesterday. All right. Yesterday, oh, it's in the key of D. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. We're going to look at that. This is more, this is a later song. Very, very popular. I can't remember uh, exactly what album it was on. You can tell me. I'm sure you can write it in there because you probably know better than I do. But anyway, I love this song. In fact, I put it in the key of D because it's easier for me to sing. It's a little lower. I always change keys when I have trouble with that. So, um, yesterday. Let's look at the look at the scale here really quick. All right, are we seeing this? No, no, that's not good. There we go. I'm a little slow and cumbersome today, aren't I? Because I wasn't, this is, I thought this would work really, really smoothly, but it's not so smoothly when I have the guitar. Oh wait, I need the D, yesterday. And I'm gonna erase that. Let's go back and look at yesterday really quick. Uh, let's see, uh, C sharp minor, so I'm gonna, oh, you know C sharp right there, it's not minor, is it? Let's go down and look at C sharp right there. And then it goes to, let's see here, F sharp. Which is right here. And then it goes to B minor, which is up here. Oops. I just uh, highlighted too much. B minor and then G, G, A, and D. G, A. So what he's doing here is he actually did, oh, let's go over here and look at this F sharp too. Because what's happening is that when he plays, all right, you see that the D right there, I'm sorry that this is <laughs> in my face, right? Hello. Wait. Yeah, there we go. Let's move me over for just a second. If you look at that D, the F sharp is a two chord, a three chord, but the F sharp is a major chord there, and the C sharp minor, it's a C sharp diminished in that scale. So what's going on is the C sharp is a five of three, and then the three is a five of six. See the five of six, the B minor is a six, and then the G, A7, D, that's a four G, a751. So what happens is that Paul McCartney really loves to use five of fives. He likes to use those. Either minor five of a chord or a major five, right? Let's look at that one more time. Yesterday. So it looks like this. Yesterday, C sharp minor, 
All my troubles seem so far away Now it looks as though they're here to stay For I believe in yesterday Oh, that right there. The B minor 7. I believe. Where does that E come in? Let's go back and look at the scale again. I'm going to highlight the scale. I believe. Let's see. I believe. The E is a 5 of A. 5 of 5. In yet, but it doesn't go to the A. It goes to the 4 chord. Yesterday. It has to go to the 4 chord because the A. If we played an A. Yesterday. It would be an A sus 4 if we were singing the G. Oh, excuse me. I mean the D note while playing the A chord at the same time. Yesterday. It just doesn't sound right. I believe in yesterday. Very interesting chord progressions. I think it's fantastic. All right, so now we know a little bit more about Paul McCartney's head and where he was in his head. Now, he might have done this just not necessarily exactly knowing what he was doing, but you can write things like that. You can always do a five of something, right? If I play a, a five of uh, D, it's A7 going to D. On this chart, you'll see right there, it says B, look underneath, B minor. I just highlighted the B. B minor to E, or B minor to E. That sounds good. C sharp minor to F sharp. C sharp minor to F sharp major. That sounds good. Or C sharp minor to F sharp minor. D to G, right? E to A. F sharp minor to B minor. Or F sharp major to B minor. All of those progressions sound fantastic. They're very good. So you can use those in your writing. And when you're playing something, if you're wondering, you know, how did they do that? Or how did they come up with that? This is one of the ways to do that. It's a tool that you can use. That you can pull out of your toolbox and say, hey, I don't know what to do right here. What am I going to write now? What chord should I use? Think of a five of five. Either a minor five, going to whatever chord that you're in, or a major five. Like I just did a C sharp, going to F sharp minor. Right there. There you go. All right. Thanks for being here. My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. We'll talk to you later. I'm going to meet my supporters over in Zoom in just about three minutes. Let me look at let me look at my comments here. Uh, I can hear you fine. Thank you, Albert. All good in Hurricane. Great. Hey, everyone. Good to see you all this morning. You're just a puppy, hell. <laughs> Dean, you're crazy. Oh wait, you can see my you can see my thing right there. That's amazing, isn't it? That's what I'm looking at. All right, I'm gonna take that off. Let's see what it says. Uh, Aliper, hello, Aliper. Welcome to have you. I see somebody else there. Very good. Heather Taylor. Thank you very much, Heather, for being here. All right, everybody. We're going to end this, but I'm going to end it as I... Yesterday All my troubles seem so far away Now it looks... At oh, what's my next chord? Now it looks as though they're here to stay. 